Welcome to my video on how to work out how many yeast cells you have in a jar of your harvested yeast or cultured yeast. This is how I do it. It's not 100% accurate. Um, you won't be able to do it 100% accurate unless you own a laboratory or some um, microscopes. I don't. I know 99% of people don't. So this is probably as close as you're going to get without actually sending it to a laboratory. It took me a while to find this information trolling through the interwebs um, but hopefully I can help all you guys out there the time and effort of going through so far I've only found videos on YouTube about how to wash your yeast to harvest your yeast but nothing about or no videos about how to um, find out how many cells you have in your washed yeast I'm not going to show you how to wash yeast or harvest yeast there's plenty of videos out there I'm sure most of you have seen Big Secure and Brewing Master Ben's videos they've just released on or well, Ben's was a few weeks ago, Big Secure's was this week um, about harvesting from commercial beer they um, they both used one of Sierra Nevada's um, and Ben used another um, variety, an English beer, I can't remember its name um, but essentially they're both bottle conditioned beers so you essentially got to make a starter um, to get the numbers up and then you can wash it after you've used it for a batch but anyway I'll chuck the link to their videos down below also before I move on there's a couple of forum posts I used on how to yeast wash again um, and then also how to split a yeast smack pack or one of the white lab files into four different separate vials that way you just use one of those vials to make a starter and pitch that into your beer. It's another way of saving some money, especially when the smack packs are about ten dollars a pack. You're eventually bringing that down to like two dollars fifty a use, plus even further when you yeast wash your own from your own FV vessels. As I said before, this isn't a hundred percent accurate uh, unless you have a laboratory, which I don't know about. I don't have one to have the space. Probably could buy a microscope, but I'd be buggered if I'm sitting there counting the cells and doing all the mathematical equations. So we'll do it this quick and simple easy way. So step one, you need to work out how many milliliters of yeast you have. Well, these are the jars I use. They're just mason jars. Uh, I recommend getting these. These are the wide mouth ones so that it's easy to pour the yeast in. It's also got measurements on the side so you've got 100, 200 and 300 mil. Um, again, your yeast will set out, and it'll, usually my when I've washed it, it um, compacts down to about here, which because of the marks you can pretty much estimate it'll be about 50 mil. But if it's about say here, first thing you do is you get say this one was full, you get another one, get your scales, switch them on, measure the weight of the jar, so 285 grams. Then all you do is you put the two glasses next to each other. You can say there'll be one here. If that one's say up to here, you just fill with water up to the same level. Put it back on your scales. And we'll just say it's, it adds an extra fifty. So that'll be two eight what two eighty five plus fifty is what three hundred and thirty. So then we know it's fifty mil of yeast in this jar. That's basically working off one gram of water is worth or one mil of water is worth the same weight as one gram of water. Which essentially is the same as yeast. It's not as again it's not gonna be a hundred percent accurate but it's a good way of estimating roughly how many um how much of the yeast slurry you have in your jar. Okay so now you know how many milliliters of yeast slurry you have you need to work out how many cells you have so <clears throat> roughly in one milliliter of yeast slurry if it's heavily thick and compacted there's going to be four and a half billion cells per milliliter for a thin slurry you're going to have one billion cells per milliliter and mine are generally I always pick in the ballpark middle uh, so I usually have just estimate three and a half billion per milliliter. So 
if we get the trusted calculator out, we go 50 mil times three and a half billion equals 175 billion yeast cells. Now, we all know there's not going to be 175 billion yeast cells that are viable because even when you've harvested it that day, you're only going to have like from 95% to say 98% viability. You're not going to get 100% because you're still going to um, eat like dead yeast cells and mutated ones that aren't that good. To work out your viability, I use Mr. Multi Calculator, which I'll do a quick demonstration on screen now. When you go to Mr. Multi's webpage, it will automatically be on your preference page. The only one you need to worry about here is repitching from slurry. As soon as you do that, just click the calendar um, and then select the date of when you did it. So we'll say, say we did it la, yesterday. There you go. It automatically gives you 93% for your viability. So now that you have your um, viability, which is 93%, and your approximate yeast cells, which is 175 billion, so now we know. That 93% of those 175 billion cells are viable. So once you've got all that information, I go to another calculator, which is Yeast Calc. Again, I'll put all these links down below for everyone. Um, and I'll flip over to that and show you how we enter all the information to work out what size starter you need in that. Okay, so here we are at the Yeast Calc. First thing we start is with select which kind of um, fermentation you want, so an ale, lager or hybrid. For this purposes V I'm just going to do an ale. We'll say it's a 22 litre batch and the gravity is going to be say 1065. So now we know we need 262 billion cells at 11.9 11 .11 million cells per milliliter of the wort. So we chuck in here how many cells we had before, so 175 billion cells and the viability was 93%, so that tells us 162 billion cells are viable. So you can see we're 100 billion cells less. So what you do is you select your method of aeration, so if you don't, if you just chuck it in like say make a mini beer, don't even shake it, just take that one. If you intermittently shake your starter to help oxygenate it, you select that one. And now there's two new stir plate ones. That's the original one that's out of um, is it his book, I've forgotten his name, is it Brew Your Own, I think it's called. Um, and then this one is another one the guy has come up with, um, showing, which actually gives you higher numbers. I haven't actually read up on the both, but for the purpose of this, we'll just use the brew your own one. Um, I'll show you afterwards the difference between the two. So now you know you've got 162 and you need to get to 262, you're probably going to need a liter and, well, a one liter starter will be more than enough. So if you did a one liter starter, um, it would give you 296 billion cells, which is going to be more than enough. I wouldn't go more than say I wouldn't go over over more than what that is which is what 34 billion cells so now you know you what size starter you need usually I make my starters a thousand and forty just it's a nice happy number for them and then one of starter and now I need 110 grams of DME in the starter another thing is I don't add yeast nutrient to my starters it doesn't need it, it's a pretty easy fermentation for it. All you're after is happy cells that multiply to get you to the correct numbers. And a one litre starter is probably going to ferment overnight, it'll be done. So I'd let it stir for probably 24 or 36 hours and then chuck it in the fridge to let the yeast settle out so I can pour the new beer off top. The yeast cow website is awesome. Um, if you're doing like a high, high gravity beer, say, I don't know, 1,090 or 1,100 beer, um, 
you can even you don't have to do your as a one starter you can actually do a, a two step or a three step starter that way you're increasing your numbers at a nice steady rate instead of just all bam trying to get them straight up there um, it's 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 good I find it's great for um, making my starters getting the that way you can pretty much make sure you um, don't under pitch over pitch too much um, if you guys don't have a digital stir plate YouTube it there's people out there who make them themselves I pick mine up you'll see it in my other video for eighty dollars um, it's not a huge cost for something that's essentially got a lifetime guarantee so and they work extremely well from the two times I've done it it's it's easy like got me the numbers I need and the next beer is fermented out well so there's a few notes on harvesting yeast I just wanted to get across before I go. One, make sure you sanitize your jars, either boiling or using star stand. I generally use star sand just because it's simpler. I use cooled boiled water just to make sure there's no nasties in my water before I wash the yeast. Don't use more than five generations of your culture. So that means that the first time you wash it, that's your second generation because it's already been used once. Once you repitch that, if you wash that yeast again from that FV after that, that'll be your third. If you have an infection or an off taste in your beer, don't don't save the yeast, just dump it. If you've already washed it, dump it. It's not worth it. If there's an off taste in your beer, it's pretty much going to come from your yeast. It could be from your temperature control, but it could be your yeast. It's not worth the risk of ruining another batch just to find out if it wasn't your yeast. Always label your harvested yeast with what yeast it is, the date and the generation. Because we can always go, oh yeah, I'm going to remember. We're not going to remember. We all know that. So label it and it's going to save you a lot of hassle um, in the future from making yeast starters and using it and then not going, oh damn use the wrong yeast. If your wa wash yeast should look creamy and white, if it's starting to look the resemblance of peanut butter colour, that like beigey mustardy colour, uh, it's 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 gone. You're better off just dumping it and um, using some fresh yeast. If it smells weird as well, it should smell just yeasty. Um, if it smells anything off flavours, like off smells, anything like that, again dump it. It's not worth the risk. Most people use it within the six months. Um, they have I have read some cases of people using it up to 12 months. Again, if it looks smells weird, don't use it. If it looks still creamy and white and smells yeasty, give it a shot. Make your starter. If it doesn't work, at least you haven't ruined a 20 odd liter batch. You've only ruined say a liter of beer. So it's 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 also a good way of checking the if the yeast is still good um, instead of chucking it straight in the batch and ruining it. Now I highly recommend you once you are using harvested yeast not just to swell it up once you've got it out of the fridge at room temperature and just dump it straight in. You're going to under pitch your yeast. I highly doubt you're going to over pitch your yeast unless you've got a massive amount of yeast in the container or you're pitching multiple jars containers of your yeast slurry. Also it checks the viability of it so if you're just dumping it straight in you don't know if it's if it's good. It could be not viable at all. So making the yeast starter, you can you can see that you can check your viability on the yeast before you even put it in. Again, you're not wasting twenty odd liters of beer instead of one liter. It's also good because the yeast starter will help the yeast cells build up their reserves again. That way, when you chuck them into your fermenter, they're ready, roaring to go, and you'll have a quicker kick off with your fermentation. So, guys, that's how I do it. If you've got any questions, chuck them down below put all the links in the more info section for you thanks for watching my channel um, if you like subscribe um, check out my other videos I usually try and put up one two videos a week minimum um, been a bit busy the past week but should be more in the future should be able to get a couple more out um, anyway guys thanks for watching Fraser Breweries till next time cheers 17 have another home brew guys Whoa.